Hi, this is Telephone Communications 3. All right, and we're going to talk about continuing with telephone management. Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about outgoing calls, and I'm going to give you a really, 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 really good tip at the end on how to handle a rude caller. Okay, all right, so outgoing calls. When you are making outgoing calls from a medical facility or any other business, okay, what you want to do when you pick up the phone is always listen for a dial tone. In many cases, you may have multi-line systems in um, the business profession or in the medical profession or in the medical office. You may have more than one line. And you could conceivably pick up the phone and start dialing and uh, someone be on the other line and the phone didn't ring. I know that most people have had that happen to them before. Um, you'll be waiting to hear someone near you <laughs> Okay, you don't want that to happen when you're working in a medical facility. So, when you pick up the phone to make an outgoing call, no matter how simple this sounds, always listen for a dial tone first. Okay? Now, there are several types of outgoing calls that you will probably make as a medical assistant. These uh, types of calls are to change or confirm an existing appointment for a patient. So you'll need to have your appointment book there ready and handy. Um, you may need to call a different doctor's office or medical facility to make a referral or to make an appointment for uh, an outpatient or an outgoing patient, all right? You may also have to use the phone to order sales, I mean, to order supplies or equipment, and you could have to use the phone to call in prescriptions to the pharmacies. So these are the basic types of um, outgoing calls that you will be making, okay? now. In today's era of cell phone technology, we have found that many young people have never really, really used a landline. So, in calling from a landline, you want to always, uh, for local calls, you don't use the area code, okay? In different medical facilities, the phone systems may vary. Some phone systems may have you um, dial 9 before you get out, or they may have some other numbers, but that will be uh, unique to that office. However, if you are dialing local calls on a landline, then you don't need to dial the area code you only dial the number after the area code, okay? Now, for long distance calls, again, because many of us are, have never really had to deal with landlines before, you just use your cell phone. With long distance calls, you do have to dial one plus the area code plus the number, okay? In most practices, you will record all of your long distance calls in a call log. And what those call logs will do is they will generally have the name of the person you're calling, the reason for the call, and the time of the call, okay? So just uh, keep that in your mind that in for long distance calls, you may have to fill out a call log, okay? Now, another thing is before you make any long distance call, you want to check the time zone that you're calling to, okay? Um, if you're in North Carolina and you're calling California, you have to know that California is three hours behind North Carolina. So therefore, you wouldn't make a call to California at nine o'clock in the morning because it's just six there and most medical practices don't open <laughs> until eight or nine. So therefore, you have to adjust the time that you would call. You wouldn't call California from North Carolina 
until let's say 12 o'clock and then it will be nine o'clock there okay um so you want to keep that in mind now telephone directory these little big white books yellow books that in some cases are obsolete however these are useful in medical practices so let me just tell you you have the white pages which are the residential phone books now at the back of the residential parts of the phone book you will also find local businesses in alphabetical order okay now you have your yellow pages which the yellow pages are businesses only and these businesses are categorized not just alphabetically but they're categorized by the type of business for instance all schools would be listed together and then under schools it would be in alphabetical order uh, maybe they would have middle schools elementary schools and then high schools but each one would be alphabetically uh, organized under that uh, if you wanted a gynecologist, you wouldn't go look for gynecologist, you would look for physician, okay? And then under physician, you would look for gynecologist. So it is, the yellow pages are divided into uh, categories of the types of businesses that they are, okay? Then in some phone books, you have blue pages or a set of information where they give local state and federal government numbers okay governmental agency numbers are located in in some instances the blue pages and some instances they're just there but uh together with them uh local or collectively they're together in an area um also with outgoing calls what you want to do is keep a list of the frequently called numbers at your desk now these are the frequently called numbers by your medical practice so this just makes it easier for you to locate those numbers because you're calling them all the time okay so that's how you manage outgoing calls when you are making an outgoing call again be prepared um, have your information there with you now how to handle a rude or impatient caller now this is going to work well for people who are not calling on the phone too because the general concepts work for everybody so you're about to learn how to calm down an angry person the first thing is you're going to stay calm you're going to speak slowly and you're going to lower your voice just a tad your calmness will help to calm down the other person you're going to be diplomatic about what you say you're not going to make sarcastic remarks and you're not going to make it the person get more on the defensive you're going to show a willingness to resolve the problem show the person that you're really interested in their problem and say we really want to get this settled you're going to think like the caller what if it were you and you were angry about something how would you want to be dealt with and then the last thing that you're going to do is you're going to offer to have the office manager talk to the caller i mean this lets that caller know oh man i'm getting through i'm going to get to the top person and they do this because you're offering it before they demand it okay so these are five points on how to handle a rude or impatient caller and this concludes this lecture on telemarketing